Hey, um, are you ready to do a podcast? Um, sure. I mean, that's what I showed up for. Oh, look at that. Amy, uh, Amy's got the, the links in there. Yeah, it's got a whole list. Hell yeah. Very cool. Uh, donate Harvey Charities Scams. That's where you want to go. Uh, <laughs> make, sure you, make sure you give to all the scams. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. Um, what were we doing? Um, I don't know. We were talking about whether or not we were going to do a podcast. There's a podcast. I guess. Are we actually like? Are we recording tonight? Is this this an actual thing, or do we just get Amy here to like be like, "Fuck it, we're just going to have you sit here for a little while and goof off, and then we're going to leave." You know, I'm actually glad you said something because I'm hitting record right now. Oh, you're going to hit record. You're going to hit record right now. <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, yeah. What about you? You ready? Uh, um, I've already done it. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 140 for Thursday, the 31st of August, 2017. I just felt like saying some weird shit. Hey, Kent, how you doing, man? Oh, jeez, man. It's the end of August. How the hell is it the end of August? It's all like 2018. Uh, I'm good, man, but we're, we're not alone. We got Amy Escobar with us. What's going on, Amy? Hey, you doing pretty good. She's she's doing pretty good. That's that's uh. Got a little good. wine. Got a little coffee. What? Wait, Ooh. wait, wait, wait. Wine and uh, no, no. Okay, now I have to ask. Now you brought up questions. <laughs> now is it wine, coffee? Is it coffee, wine, or is it wine and coffee mixed? Or do you have two separate glasses? One for the coffee and one or, for the wine. Or are you just whining because all you have is coffee? I um. So we got a little like, little teeny teeny glass of, of wine. I have like three bottles that are open and need to be finished. And then coffee, cause I don't know, like why not just mix the two? Um, I mean, it's valid. I'll, I mean, I'll allow it. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works, but that's what I like about Amy. She challenges the norm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds good to me. It uh, looks good on paper. Uh, speaking of challenging things, um, did you know that? So, I just want to get straight into it, man. I hate Texas. I I hate Texas. I hated living there both times that I lived there. I still think the only redeeming quality of the entire state is the city of Austin and maybe the Riverwalk in San Antonio, maybe. Um, there's just so much that I don't like about Texas that we don't even need to get into it right now because what I'm here to say is te- Texas got fucked up, man. Like, it got jacked up and... Even as much as I hate Texas, that's not cool. Right, man. Uh, yeah, so uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you, you're very well aware of Houston and the surrounding areas uh, there on the, the east coast of, or the Gulf Coast, if you prefer, of Texas really got slammed by Hurricane Harvey, and most of it's underwater now. Yeah. They're under a lot of water, and uh, the uh, it's pro- the county that that Houston is in at one time was thirty percent underwater. Like the of the county, thirty percent of the county was underwater, and that's yep. that's that's like a lot of water. Amy, have you uh, have you been to Texas? Um, only very very briefly. I kind of have the same thought about Texas because I researched there. I almost moved to Austin. Um, yeah. Um, not not really though. It's a uh, it's a miserable place. It's really hot and full of a bunch of really. Uh, not very nice, not nice to be around people. However, again, Austin, man, Austin's Austin in the surrounding area of Austin is just awesome. Uh, except for crunchy. She's in the chat room right now and she's in the <laughs> surrounding area of Austin. And apparently she's not awesome um, because she's calling me names. Uh, yeah, no, I think crunchy's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, but, but that's beside the point. No, uh, uh, Texas. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I don't know. It, it's got some really wonderful places in it, and um, there are some really good people there. And I do feel for the people of Houston. I don't know anybody that currently lives in Houston, but I do know a lot of people that are from Houston, hmm. and uh, I, I feel for their families that are dealing with this right now. Uh, you're uh, you're supposed to visit Houston uh, here in a couple of days. 
<laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I won't be here mm. ne- show next week. I am doing some traveling. Uh, got some business to take care of, and I was going to be flying on. Well, I'm still flying Saturday, uh, but I was supposed to be flying into Houston, which I didn't realize until uh, today, yesterday, <laughs> and um, it's like, oh crap! Wait, that's not good. Uh, but it, so today, they, United is the airline, unfortunately, that I'm flying with. They uh, started flying again today. However, uh, so my flight into Houston was still on time, scheduled, not a problem, but my flight out of Houston was canceled. And that's (laughs) the problem. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) so, so wait, 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 wait. As it is right now, just doing the simple math, not reading into anything, (laughs) just the simple math. As of right now, you are due to become a Houston refugee. Right. (laughs) I fixed that, though. (laughs) Uh, it only cost me about an hour on hold with United, uh, but when the uh, when the operator or or uh, customer service representative, if you will, finally came on the line, she was a very nice person, and I learned all about her. Uh, she works from home. She lives in Florida. She's got a couple of dogs. She takes care of her uh, uh, father who has Alzheimer's. Uh, I learned all about this nice lady. Uh, which uh, I guess it takes so long for the the computer to bring up like the all the available flights or whatever. Mm. Um, we just kind of chatted for like twenty minutes in the meantime. Right, and because she's working from her spare bedroom on dial up, trying to bring up entire tables of flights yeah. and shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, but no, she was actually she was very nice and she helped me out a lot. Now I'm flying tomorrow instead of Saturday into Denver. And the uh, downside of that is that uh, I have to stay the night in Denver and then fly into Indy on Saturday. Are they paying for you to stay in Denver? They are not because oh. the the way that they wanted to rebook me was leaving out on the 5th, uh, I think it was, what, Tuesday? Hmm. And also through Houston. <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. No, ma'am, we're not doing that. Uh, how about friday can i leave friday uh yeah so that's what i'm doing um while you're in denver you should try to try to hook up with uh coverville and see if maybe you can do dinner or something like that oh i know i'm I'm a dude with all the ideas i have zero execution skills but man i got ideas just pouring out of the ears um yeah i mean it'd be a super late dinner because i'm not getting into like nine o'clock or something what time are you leaving uh, seven, seven, little after seven. Like this is the, this is the beauty of this podcast. We could totally be having this conversation offline, but instead we're brassing it out to all three of our viewers. Um, <laughs> and here's my social security number. <laughs> my travel plans. I'll be in Denver. Swing on by for a uh, for an autograph. Um, <laughs> hey, it was uh, it was the twins' birthday yesterday. I got them. Well, we got them Apple watches. Oh wow. Um, we uh. Sterling was the one that wanted an Apple Watch. Madison was saying that she didn't really care. She didn't think she was going to get an Apple Watch. So she was like, yeah, blowing it off. I go to set him up. And of course, Madison's, of course, we're doing this completely in secret, right? Like the night before their birthday or whatever. So they wake up in the morning to the to the watches being there because that's what mm-hmm. I do. Madison's watch synced up first time perfectly straight on through. Sterling's took me an hour and a half to sync up, and I still don't know why or how it was fixed, but it's worked fine since. And this is what I get for trying to do shit at midnight. Yeah, way to go, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it, it worked out, so good, good. Uh, Squid says, fuck Apple. Um, of course, of course he does. That's it. That's Sa- save all your Apple hate for the, uh, for the show on the 14th. Two yeah, two weeks from now. Yeah. Uh, you can you can give us all the hate you want because we're going to be talking all about the the Apple event. <laughs> right. uh, Amy, uh, are you an Apple person, a Windows person, an Android person, or something else? Okay, so I'm on a Core Two Duo MacBook with an original Cinema display. So I'm more of a like poor person, honestly. Ah. <laughs> 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 um, uh, um, you know what I. I am kind of both. I think philosophically, I probably am not an Apple person, 
but I actually really like Final Cut 10. I don't, I really don't mind it. And it's, it's really actually kind of nice for things like no frills, like a mm. YouTube video or something. Right. And I, pre I appreciate, um, I appreciate certain interfaces. So I don't know. It's kind of hard. Centrist, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Final Cut Pro 10 was actually the first one that I used, you know, after they did the big switch over and, uh, mm -hmm. in 08 or whatever. And, Learning how to use that was so dead simple. That's why I like Audition for my audio editing because it's basically the same. It even uses mm -hmm. some of the same commands. And then, of course, using Audition, then now I'm using Premiere Pro because I'm on a fucking Windows computer as my main computer. But like, if it wasn't for uh, for Final Cut, I would not have gotten into the whole like real serious editing process. And it is dead simple, and it makes it. it, it it's a really good mm -hmm. interface. I know that they took away a lot of the stuff, but. Whatever. Well, and they added a lot of it back eventually. Right. Um, I know people were really upset with the multicam stuff, but I mean, they added it back. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, there's a there's so much going on right now that I can't help but think back to a, an easier time, a better time, a time when when I could just kind of get lost in a world that, that wasn't so stressful, where I could learn about friends that were on massive adventures across faraway lands and places where, you know what, I really don't feel like sweeping the floor, so I'm just going to get my magical broom to do it. Um, back in the <laughs> days when I was reading a lot of Dragonlance. Yeah, man, I, those, those were great times. Uh, if you guys out there have not read a Dragonlance novel, I highly encourage you to pick up... Dragons of Autumn Twilight, mm -hmm. which is the very first Dragonlance novel. Um, just check it out. If you if if you have any interest whatsoever in in fantasy, uh, just or just just fiction in general, like I, I highly encourage it. It's a very easy read. Uh, it's very fun. It, it's just great. It's it's escapist literature is what and, I would and call. It's, it. And it's right there. If you're watching the video version, I'm pointing at it right now. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Well, anyway, so the reason we're talking about Dragonlance right now, there was an article posted on Vox uh, just a few days ago, uh, probably about a week ago. Uh, and Margaret Weiss, who we've had on this show, she is the author of the original Dragonlance books. Uh, she and Tracy Hickman uh, were co-authoring it. She's the actual like word author. Tracy is like the world creator. It. Uh, she posted this article, and I I had to read it, of course, and. I had some I had some thoughts. Man, Amos, did you read the article? I did not. I did not get a chance to uh get, I did not get a chance to really do a lot of the linking and reading stuff for this week, unfortunately. Right. Well, so my thoughts about this article, uh, the way it was presented was, "Hey everyone out there that's suffering from Game of Thrones uh uh uh, damn, I can't even think of the word I'm looking for. Words, words, Game of Thrones yeah, words. Just me. Don't get old, folks. Don't get old. Fatigue? <laughs> Overload? No, yeah, no, 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 no. The opposite. Like, um, oh, the if opposite. You're if, you're, if you're missing... Oh. Withdrawal. 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 Withdrawal is the word I was looking for. Withdrawal. So that, that are having Game of Thrones withdraw, why don't you check out Dragonlance? Indulge in the nostalgia that it's Dragonlance. And so I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be a really great article. Well, I started reading it, and I automatically had mixed feelings because as much as she is praising Dragonlance, she's simultaneously like knocking the simplicity of the characters, the lack of depth, the uh, cliche of the archetypes. Mm. And uh, so I was kind of like about halfway through this article, I was like, fuck this. Like this is like, she's, pissing me off right now but i finished the article and by the end like uh, i feel like she redeemed herself uh, but I, it's, I don't know i don't know i'm eager to talk to this lady and i i'm like okay you know what i i, I want to find out what she really thinks about dragon lance yeah so, you know what there's her there's her twitter handle right there i'm gonna i'm gonna reach out to her uh her name is constance grady and uh, she was grac gracious enough to reply to me like immediately yeah. saying, hell yeah. Uh, yes, I will definitely come on your show to talk about Dragonlance. Uh, so look for that in the somewhat near future. Uh, the, the coming weeks. 
in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah. let's say the coming weeks. It's not going to be next week for sure or the following. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, so we'll we'll be having a Vox staff writer on the show uh, fairly soon. So look forward to that. Oh shit, son! People with actual notoriety on this show not going to happen. Right. <laughs> Um, speaking of, uh, of, of fun stuff, like, uh, getting one in the, in the way back tropes of your, um, some Lord of the Rings RPG forums. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I've kind of been on a nostalgic kick for, I don't know. I feel like maybe ever since I crossed over 25 or something. <laughs> you, don't, you don't look a day over like 18. I know. <laughs> Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. The good old um, days. Five years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's going to work out to my advantage someday. Um, <laughs> but um, so I, uh, I still remember when we first got internet and um, we really didn't have it for quite a while. We were really out in the boondocks. But I, uh, I remember it was very close to like when those when the lord of the rings came out um or at least when i got to see them because i kind of got to see them a little later the movies right not the books the movie yeah yeah Um, (laughs) i was gonna say holy shit you're we look way young (laughs) damn (laughs) doing good that's a oil of olay isn't it holy shit (laughs) (laughs) meows Maybe it's Maybelline. Don't say things like that because I'll just be like, oh, what? Maybe. And then I'll (laughs) (laughs) kind of goes in one ear, comes out the other. But um, so I I remember this was like in the days where I was just like finding out what anime was. And I was just like getting like I just got an email address. And so I mm -hmm, mm -hmm, (laughs) hotmail. It's like the the Mm -hmm. nerd awake. Yeah, oh, yeah, I still, I still can't believe how many people never saw the HTML in Hotmail. Like they just assumed it was Hotmail. Like, oh, they didn't realize well, those, that you threw their original. Their original logo was like the, uh, the letters were capitalized, right? Right. The H- yeah. In the L. Yeah. Uh huh. Hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Amy, you were probably like three when that happened. So. Uh, but no, because she she was around when Lord of the Rings came out. So she's like she's like eighty seven. <laughs> she's just yeah, right. she's just that oil of L A. Man, I'm telling you. Shut the fuck up, everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, uh, I just went to this old forum. It was It's called uh, LOTR Plaza. And you had to, like, take a person. It was like you took a personality test or something, and it told you, like, what nation you were. I mean, people were super into this, too. Um, and, like, there were different, different forums for different realms and people would like visit each other and i just remember being so secretive about it i i don't know if i just thought it was like really uncool or i was like oh if my parents find out i have like another life they're gonna <sighs> freak out or something wow look at that hotmail logo yeah, i just got heard. distracted see html yeah. like it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah like oh my god if you get discovered to be a secret nerd oh no yeah yeah but it's kind of sad because you go back and like nothing's there anymore mm. it's, like, oh. no. it's like you almost don't want to go and look back at things because it's might be gone like the whole website that you loved might not even be well, there anymore. you remember the uh, the token rings like there used to be a dragon that's token ring and you'd click the at the bottom of you'd click next next site or whatever yes. and oh. there was like these eight Geo sites City. It was like GeoCities and Angel Fire and all those mm-hmm. like yeah, but but there's there's like this specific Dragonlance token ring that I would just follow the like for hours and every time I'd go there there'd be something new and yep, it was all like oh. HTML 2.0 like they hadn't even upgraded like you couldn't <laughs> there was no CSS it was all like sometimes you'd you'd pop on there and the t- and they forget to to open with the HTML tag so it'd just be script you know <laughs> <laughs> there's no. Dude, that- well, three point two, by the way. Just yeah, there, for the there's, rest. yeah, there's no, there's no docsis header or anything else. <laughs> yeah, none of that. None uh, of that. This, this is still decades before, uh, before Amy came along. So, <laughs> or way after, or way after. It's one of those. <laughs> we just don't know. I just <laughs> ageless, ageless Amy. That's uh, th- there you go. I yeah, think yeah, that's uh, the uh, the time of MSN 
AIM and Zanga is kind of that's where you can date me. About I think I was about thirteen then. So, so, so the turn of the turn of the century. <laughs> hey, uh, I mean, yo, I tell you what, if you if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, I think I highly recommend to you Dragonlance. Uh because it's a it it's very much in the same It's like a uh, simplified version of it. Oh, yes, that's what the absolutely. article was saying. That was that was interesting because I've always thought I didn't even read the Lord of the Rings until I saw the first film. Mm. Because at the time, I mean, I have not grown up reading anything anyway. And Tolkien really It's difficult. Like I, I still mean, haven't he's, read it. He's he's good actually with like poetry and and but he just kind of you know it's just well I mean I he'll know. he'll spend three days describing a tree. Yeah, or like three, there's three days, three pages is what I meant. There's a yeah. reason three, why. It feels like three days. There's a <laughs> there's a reason why like like uh, Harry Potter um, kind of just took off with readers Bastards. more. Oh you yeah, know? no. Then you will absolutely love Dragonlance if you, if you like the themes and the basic material of Lord of the Rings, but the pacing of Harry Potter, Dragonlance is is built for you. So the thing that I love about Dragonlance so much about about Kryn and about everything is that there is this there's a rule structure inherent in the story. It's not just you kind of go through and you don't know. It is it flat out says what the rules are. You know, every character has a set of rules that they're following. And one character with Tasselhoff, the rules are that there are no rules. You know, <laughs> and, and they live right. by it. Like, if there's a rule to be broken, Tasselhoff's like, uh, I, not, not, not consciously, but his character has to find a way to break that rule. And uh, my OCD, the detail and the, the organization that goes into Dragonlance without being thrown in your face, you don't need a, a tutorial to read Dragonlance. By no, the, the not, time not you, you by the time you finish the first trilogy, the 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 nine hundred pages or whatever that the first trilogy encompasses, you you know the rules, like you already know them. Yeah, and th yeah, I, I just I I love that aspect of it. I love the fact that you've got all the tropes and all the stereotypes, but you don't have all the cliches. You got you mm -hmm. got a lot of the cliches, but not all of them. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, well, and it it also kind of defined, it further defined the genre. I think a lot of, a lot of uh, novel like fantasy novels in that vein, borrow heavily from Dragonlance. Right. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, that's the second round <laughs> on this show about Dragonlance. <laughs> you guys yeah. are the oh. like second people to tell. My husband's been telling me I should read them too. So. I've, I've, just I've read got some books. I've got I've got I've got all of them. Like they're all right there. <laughs> oh, man. so so speaking of uh you know genres and uh, you know just various art forms and and all of that sort of stuff um i think it would be better I, I think communities would be better served if they were communities of artists that appealed to their their interests and so uh, are, are you saying that are you saying margaret weiss should start releasing like short stories and and maybe have a have a way to to for the for her fans, her diehard fans, to compensate her and 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 show their appreciation monetarily for her time as she as she released these short stories and these these self uh, 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 indulgent um, the the self indulgent pastime of putting forth literature with of characters that she loves and and she could make a a, a, a decent well, living at that with well, that uh, would, with voluntary that would, uh, donations. Yeah, you know what? She would do very well if she did that. Uh, yeah. Like, for example, if, if she started a Patreon, uh, like, oh. like we did. We started one. Patreon we have a Patreon? Ritual Misery. Um, uh, yeah, but no, no, go, go check it out. If you, if you enjoy what we do and you find value in it and you want to give a little something back, uh, go check it out, patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. We try to uh, give extra stuff, uh, pre-shows, post-shows, uh, exclusive interviews, um, old stuff from the archives that we haven't released anywhere else. Um, go check it out. Ritual Misery. Or I'm sorry, not Ritual Misery. Com. Patreon. Com. Slash Ritual Misery. Yeah, it's currently acting a little funny. I, I'd, I'd show it on the screen, but it's it's. Oh, there yeah. it is. There, there, there's, there's the uh, the. Action. And we still have. We still need to do new video, dude. Dude, we've been like the last three times we've gotten together in real life. We're like, yeah, dude, this is the time. We're doing yep. the video. And, and then there's <laughs> beers and 
there's no <laughs> videos. I don't. <laughs> right. We we need to hold off on the beers one time to do the video and then drink the beers and then redo the video because that's what'll happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or we'll do the video. <laughs> just the drink first coffee time. too. Oh, right. Yeah. Coffee. You know <laughs> we'll, what? We'll, we'll, we'll just we'll just drink a uh, green monster mixed with strawberry vodka and a fifty fifty over ice. It's golden, man. Such a good party on that stuff. <laughs> Woo. Um, ha- the ha- hangover is hell, but whatever. Uh, it, you know, you worry about that na- later. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so besides Patreon, uh, there's there's other ways that artists can get together, uh, like-minded artists get together and and create communities and share their art with one another and find common uh, audiences and things like that. I, you know, uh, Amy, what what are your thoughts about artists forming communities and encouraging each other in, in such ways? Well, it's just, I feel like there's a sustainability predicament for one thing. Um, I've been watching a lot of interviews of um, independent filmmakers. And so just just talking from like a financial perspective here first, um, it's interesting to see like when people choose to do like a crowdfunding kind of thing. Or when they choose to get like donors, um, like people who are g- like really interested in what they're particularly trying to do. Mm. So I, I feel like there's, man, it's just kind of just starting, isn't it? All this like independent um, stuff. I mean, and when I say independent, I don't mean like even someone who is. I mean, people who are famous still do stuff that's like, quote, independent. Um, But I just think it's really it's just kind of fascinating to see like different people's approaches. And I think looking at I think looking at where the money is can be in a good way to just kind of see like who who's going to be around them, because if you're going to go for like if you're going to do crowdfunding a lot of times you're going to do a lot of social media. I mean, these people hire teams and they might already have a lot of people that they've met. Um, but then it seems like there's still a lot of people who are more, almost like more private and they just go directly to like certain people who want to influence culture and have the means to do so. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's really, I feel like I I kind of feel I, I don't know it feels a little weird to like associate money with community because it's not necessarily always true, mm. but I do seem to to find that to be somewhat the case a lot of time. Um, I don't know. There's a really there's a really really interesting YouTuber who I've followed. I followed him for a long time. I don't know if you're familiar with Olin Rogers. Um, but I say, I say he's interesting because, um, I mean, he's graduated from doing like funny skit YouTube videos to striking out on his own channel where he's basically just telling like personal stories. Um, (laughs) and, um, yeah, I think what you were just, he, he's now getting into cartoons. Like he, he, it's, it's very interesting when, and when I say cartoons, it's not just like, I mean, he's he's put his own money into like hiring actual animators. And I Mm. think he's actually getting a show with like David Tennant being one of the main characters now on um, TBS. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who I don't think he like he lives in like um, Tennessee, I think. Um, Mm. And really like super grassroots, like like super grassroots, like, and it's interesting to just see the decisions he's made and the people that he's had in his videos and all of the stuff that is now happening. I know it's kind of a ramble, but as a, as a uh, community sprung up around him or like, you know, fans of his work, have they, have they like formed a community together or? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, go on Tumblr. You'll, you'll find like freaking gifts and memes and stuff. Um, and I think he, he, there were three guys in his original troop and, um, 
like went back in the old days when they were just kind of goofing around and stuff. And I think out of all of them, he's been the one that's been probably a little more industrious, really, really personal. Like a lot of his videos that have lots of views are, um, are just him, just him talking to the camera. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I I think I've I've seen things like this and it's not just YouTube and I'm going to bring another YouTuber into, into this, uh, trade chat. Um, she does she does well, well Blizzard stuff mostly, but she also does thing uh, news and views on other games, um, you know, other companies. She does convention coverage. She's really uh, she she speaks out for uh, people with disabilities, especially things like uh, you know uh, social anxiety disorders and and you know things like that. Uh, she's she has a huge community, and I I, I only know this because I'm, I'm a minor part of it. Um, but then you can look at uh, you go from from Trade Chat, <clears throat> to, which her real name's Danielle something or other doesn't matter because she goes by Trade Chat. Uh, you go from that to someone like um, like uh, 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 shoots what the hell's her name? I can't. Uh, uh, yeah, see this is how good I am right now. Uh, Lacey Green. Lacey Green started making YouTube videos when she was sixteen or whatever. And now she makes a living going out and speaking uh, against uh, against sexual predatorism and speaking for equality, uh, sexual equality and um, uh, relationship equality and, and women's you know rights and things like that. Right. Another huge community. I, I think it's awesome when you have when you have when you when you find that spark and you take that and you lead it with a good message. And you can build a community around that of, of like-minded people that are willing to help you spread that message. And you're doing it in a way that's not costing everybody a bunch of money. You mm. know, um, Lacey Green goes to universities and speaks. I'm sure the university pays Lacey Green because, you know, that's how she makes money, right? Um, but the students don't have to pay to go and, and listen to the message and, and, and see the stories of, 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 you know, diversity that she's, she's found and she shares and not to mention, she's still doing YouTube videos on all kinds of sex positivity stuff and everything else. I think it's great. I yeah. wish we could have a community around here that would have a message, but it probably means <laughs> that we needed a message first. So we should we should we should find a message, Kent. Yeah, right. No, you know, and I was actually just thinking about this about uh, you know building communities and whatnot. Uh, Justin and Brian, with the Diamond Club community, uh, has literally changed our lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, the um, you know, they, and they're just, and they'll they'll be the first to tell you they all they do is is you know shout a bunch of bullshit into the void, and a bunch of us relate to it and like it enough mm-hmm. that you know we like this community has sprung up around them and it's surpassed them. Yeah. Um, the you know it started out as just you know a, a group of fans of their work, and now it's it's so much more than that. There's there's diamond clubbers out there might not even recognize Brian or Justin on the street because diamond club has grown so much like out from them, you know, and it's a, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know. There's something to be said about, you know, community. Uh, once a, once a community is formed and it, and it takes on a life of its own, um, as long as the, like the original feel, um, I, I wanted to say message, but a message feel. makes it sound but a feel mm-hmm. of a community, uh, as long as that stays consistent throughout, you don't have to know about the origins or about the, you know, the central figures that, that right. started ever. Uh, it, it can still be like, you will, you could be in a, a random place on the planet. And if you see somebody throwing up diamonds, they're, <laughs> they're your, you know what I mean? I'm sorry. I just thought of someone like literally up chucking, just tossing diamonds. <laughs> Like, yo, they're worthless anyway. It's all a conspiracy. Like a <laughs> <laughs> Only the diamonds. Um, I, I, I do want to take this opportunity real quick to remind people that we joke about not having a community. We joke about not having having people that, you know, an audience and things like that. I hate saying fans because it's just so, mm. it's, mm. yeah, it's not it's not the proper service, as me and Ken have spoken be, so, spoken about. Um, Followers. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're we, in a cult. We, well, <laughs> We, we we have an audience on this show. It's it's small. It's growing slowly, and we're very proud of what the little corner of the internet that, that you know, the little corner of the internet and the Venn diagram with Diamond Club that, that our audience has has grown to be. But 
when it really comes down to it is we have projects like the one we're doing this year, the third year in a row we're doing our New Year's Eve streamathon. Um, I'm going to pimp that out right now because we are in the planning stages to make that happen. It's last year we raised a couple thousand dollars. The year before that was a couple hundred dollars. I just want to see if we can continue that growing. We are looking for people to take up spots. As of right now, it's still going to be 27 hours. So we cover all 26 crossings of midnight for the new year. If you are a streamer, if you are a gamer, if you have a rig to where you can stream or you've ever wanted to, I don't know how we're going to make it work this year with Twitch instead of DiamondClub.tv being the, the central tried, channel, but we're we going to make it happen one way or the other. And um, if you want to be part of that, whether it's just hanging out in chat room or helping raise money or any of that, administrative stuff, streaming, whatever... Let us know. Email us uh, podcast at ritualmisery.com and we'll get you in the loop. We'll get you part of the group. And uh, the, the central core of it is we want to raise some money for a good cause and we want to make sure that no one has to spend New Year's Eve alone. So yep. that, you know, if, if you if if New Year's Eve is something that you know, people don't find important around you, but you find it important, we want to make sure there's someone for you to talk to, someone for you to goof off with, have a good time with for New Year's. We can't do it for all the other holidays because everybody's always too busy. But for, for damn New Year's, man, let's have some beers, let's hang out, and let's, uh, let's make sure that anybody out there that's lonely on New Year's isn't alone. For sure, man. Uh, it, it, it was a blast. Last year was insane. And this year, even though this is in the extremely early stages, it's shaping up to be probably better than last year even. Uh, and uh, we, can, can, we can raise over $10,000 this year. I know we can. <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and say now that uh, we've got Christy Cates locked in for another performance. Oh, yeah, that's yep. That's, that's all I'm ready to announce right now because we got a lot of people in the wings. But she she approached us and like, hey, I, we need to lock in these times. Let's, let's do this. So yeah. Christy Cates for another another performance this year, and that was awesome last year. <clears throat> so, yeah. hey, um, it can't. Yeah, I got it. Uh, Crunchy says New Year's New Year's isn't a family holiday. It is for the Diamond Club family. I'll tell you that right now. Yep. Um, for the Ritual Misery family, for Diamond Club family, Crunchy, you're part of our family. Even if uh, even if you do celebrate too much Texas, hey Kent, uh, there, there's a little something, a little uh, little game we like to play in this show. Um, so it's about time for you to hit a button, I believe. Or am I hitting it? You want me to hit it? I'll hit it. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for Hot Takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. I hit the button. Amy, are you familiar with this game, Hot Takes? Uh, no. All right. Not really. So you are in the hot seat. You are going to give us your hot takes. I'm going to give you a topic, and you are going to rant or ramble or whatever. Say some words, whatever comes to your mind about the topic until you hear the record scratch. When you hear that sound, you're going to stop talking. I'm going to give you another topic, and then we're going to go again. And we're going to do this for about a minute. Are you ready? Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, Amy. Adulting, am I right? Oh, um, man, it's really hard when uh, you're... you're... <sighs> Look. You don't really know where to go hang out with people. They say you can go to a bar and get to know people. But what if you go to one and like half the people are drunk? So you're like, okay, I'm going to go to a karaoke bar this time because at least, you know, there's some tunes that will kind of break the ice. You go to a karaoke <laughs> bar and you realize it's all going to be like Backstreet Boys and like maybe Bon Jovi or something. You're kind of like, I don't know if this is my style. But Amy, Amy. Drink. Sorry. <laughs> YouTube, am I, I right? I Wait, what'd you say? YouTube? YouTube, am I right? Oh. So it's kind of funny when people complain about not getting money when they're basically just kind of talking about like really random bullshit that no one needs to hear. I mean, you know, more power to them. I mean, that's fine and all because like, I mean, whatever. It's about personality. <laughs> all right, Amy. Fake mustaches, am I right? Pretty much my favorite thing to wear whenever I'm just feeling like I need a change in my life and... It's kind of funny when you realize uh, you don't look so bad in one. Ah, they need fake uh, sideburns. Mickey D's, am I right? Okay, so uh, 
they put something in the burgers. It makes you think that you want one, even though when you eat them, you're like, crap, that was not good. But then like <laughs> two weeks later, you're like, shit, I need beef. And so you go and you're disappointed yet again. Get the sauce the big muffin. The Ritual Misery podcast, am I right? So when two people come together, I mean, there's like multiple ideas that you can have that you might not have had before. And you got that little thing that's just, I mean, look, you can't have just like ritual. You can't have just like misery. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. Come on. Oh, that was great. Uh, my, my favorite part was when she goes, but then like two weeks later, you got to get some meat. <laughs> From experience, oh, that was a lot of fun. You were you were oh, you were shit. fantastic in that game. <laughs> oh my I mean, god! I, I even watched that freaking documentary, and I still had an attack of the munchies. And I, the last yeah. time, I was like, Stephen, no, you cannot let no. I don't care. Not happening again. Because I always just feel like like I'm eating trash. I don't know. Yeah, well, the, yeah. That's that's what it is. And then I forget the next day and go back. Right, every every single day, all the time. Hey, um, I got a, another little game I want to play with you guys tonight. I want to play uh, Facebook's Least Wanted. Now, oh. I, I like going through the Facebooks and uh, find out what, what random shit people are selling. And I have brought forth some of my favorite items that I've found in my, re my local area that you can go and buy right now on Facebook. And I want to I show it to you guys. I'm going to show it to the audience. And I want you guys to describe what it is and tell me when you figure out what it was that caused me to flag this as, as a what the fuck kind of thing. Okay. All right. All right. I, I, yeah. <laughs> First item. Here we go. Okay. So it's a smart watch, it says. Mm-hmm. Um... See, $150. It says originally $199 new, still in box, never been used. Um, uh, yeah, I, Samsung I looking something. Yeah. It's got the thing on, still on it. Definitely okay, what's the, that? the button's like a Samsung device, like a, for Android OS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the paper in the back? Merrill Lynch. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> 14k, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, you guys are pretty close. Um, the thing that I noticed on this was one, the camera is actually taking a picture of that Merrill Lynch paper paper in the background because it's crystal clear. But the item they're trying to sell is blurry as hell, not just <sighs> because it still has a little sticker on it, but because it's out of focus. Right. <laughs> the other yeah. thing that I want to 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 bring to mind is that it says. Still in box, but the dude's oh, wearing it. But it's clearly yeah. on his wrist. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, good job, Scott Laney. Uh, you're a liar. So. It was actually philosophical because we all live in tiny boxes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, Little boxes. Yeah, that, that always makes me think of um, uh, Weeds, the show Weeds. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Little boxes on the hillside. Little <laughs> boxes. Okay. Anyway. You, you ready for this one? <laughs> All right. What do we got? Okay. What, what's next? And go. <clears throat> All right. N64 games. Mm -hmm. uh, $50. Mm -hmm. Six N64 games. Yep. All right. I see, I really... see six of them. They look I like N64 it. games. Yeah. Yeah. They have the thing. Um... You'll yeah. notice this is the only picture, okay? So I just want to make sure that you understand. This is the only. There's only one picture. Okay, I see that they're they're primarily sports games. Mm -hmm. One of them you can't really see. Right. Yeah. One of yeah. them's red. So, I can't. So I actually don't know what a N64 game looks like, but I see it has the Nintendo thing on there. <laughs> right? right. No, wait. What is that? Is that not I a Nintendo? Five known titles and a um, and a mystery title. Okay, you said there's more pictures though. No, is, no, right? no. That's the only picture. Oh, that's the only picture. That's the All only right, so picture. Five, five known titles and a mystery title. Look at look at the text. Yeah, six in sixty four games. Right. So what's it's like the, a grab bag. What's that six game? <laughs> I guess you got to buy it and find out. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's about the only thing because I'm not. I'm not. No, no, that. no. That's that's it. It's it's a matter of you're going to sell me six games, but you're not even going to tell me what one of them is. Right. Hey, plus that price includes the 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 cost of mystery, sir. <laughs> it's, it's actually five games plus one mystery. <laughs> yes. You, it could I be swear. A, it, it could be another copy of the, of one of those games for all you know. Could be. That's the that's part of the fun. <laughs> If it isn't the sellers on Facebook, it's the buyers. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, okay. What's next? Okay. 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 Next one. We got two more. Okay. Next one. I'm going to go ahead and expand this text here. Okay. There we go. And go. All right. So we've got a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, like new. Mm. Oh, wait. Like new, but it has a new LCD, which was replaced by North Tech Group. Uh, that's alarming right off the bat. So why would you not take it to the Apple Store? Um, Do they still mm -hmm. make 13 inches? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at the let's look at the rest of the pictures. Okay, okay, okay. So you got one. The first picture just has the Mac. It has the top view, the over over top view. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next picture, we, we have, it's open, so you can see it has all the keys. It's got a screen that looks like it's not cracked because you can see the reflections on it. It doesn't look like there's, you know, spider webbing or anything else on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks pretty normal. Now, if you've ever bought a, um, if you ever bought a, a Mac on, e uh, on uh, Facebook, usually they show a picture of whatever, like the, the about, you know. So oh, let's, right. Let's, mm -hmm. yeah. let's see what this last picture is. The last picture is frozen. There we go. Oh, hey, we're unbroken now. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Yay, internet. Um, so, real, so real quick, Jote said uh, picnic, uh, meaning problem you, in chair, not in computer. <laughs> right, yeah. In your chair, uh, so <laughs> okay. So all right. So we were talking about the the thirteenth thirteen inch MacBook Pro being sold on Facebook, and we're trying to figure out what's the, what's the problem with it. Um, well, so that now image is very on. blurry. So there's pretty much no way to know what you're buying if like can't see. Yeah, like is that like the the back of the like what? Are, yeah, that, that's that's the that's the plate on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's helpful. Yeah, it's 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 so blurry. Like, uh, and I want you to look at look at this picture, yep, and look great. at this picture. Very clear, beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're completely in focus. Um, uh, very very well framed. Um, and yet that last one. The last one, not so much important information. Right. Um, Does that have the serial number on it? Probably. Uh, but but they, but they didn't give us anything about it, and there's no stats in the thing other than, uh, in the description other than the fact they replaced the screen. It's like well, new, I mean, but they replaced the screen. A hard drive and eight gigs of RAM. I mean, that's right. Well, that's that's that you just described uh, like two thirds of the MacBooks ever released since 2010. <laughs> Isn't it great when people say what they bought stuff for? It's like, yeah, was that like ten years ago? I mean. I see people doing that for all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. So, thanks, Marcy. <laughs> that irrelevant third picture. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and we are still having technical issues here. Uh oh. Wait. W would you let's start that up again and let's start <laughs> this up again. Well, luckily, I'm off tomorrow, so I can. Uh, Handle all the things. Off. Do you have just like a thousand days of leave? Uh, tomorrow's a, a, a family day. Oh, is it really? Yeah. You would know that if you weren't a civilian. Uh, see, my our family day, we get a four day week or a four day weekend going into next week. So Monday and Tuesday are the days oh, off. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. So I, I brought this up. 
that I, w- I wanted to have available for the next time that we had gremlins mm. uh, or with our audio mm-hmm. or video for that matter, like mm-hmm. we're having right now. And um, yeah. <laughs> You're, you're gonna get our show tagged again. <laughs> uh, well, just don't just cut this out. Uh, yeah, probably easier said than done. <laughs> um, okay, so we uh, we should be back live. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Are we getting video? I don't know if we're getting video though. None are you still with Sammy? Okay, yeah. There you mm-hmm. go. Are we are we back live yet? Not a. Are you talking to me? Uh, looks it looks like we are. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> We're live. Okay, so so to complete this, uh, the, the 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 plate on the back of the MacBook Pro is completely blurred out. There's no chance of knowing what the hell's in this thing or getting the model number or anything else. Like you just kind of go off, got to go off the description, which says like new with a new LCD assembly. There was a, we were replaced by a non Apple manufacturer right. when yep. we have an Apple store in Anchorage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they saved ten bucks mm. yeah. for <laughs> your product yeah. and service. Yeah, they saved ten bucks but totally trashed their warranty. It's cool. Yep, that too. Okay, and the last one is this right here. Um and and, and go ahead and uh, and tell them what you see on this one. Well, you're not seeing anything, are you? Because uh, I didn't share, no. didn't reshare with you. So <laughs> there's that. Because we run a professional show around here. Oh my God! So this is like, like 16 copies of Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> um, infinite. Uh, yeah, infinite number of discs for Call of Duty: Infinite Warfare is what we <laughs> what we have here. Um. Yeah. Uh. So is he selling like thirty dollars each? Like, why would you? Why would you show them all? Like, just show one and say that I've got a few copies of this. Thirty dollars each. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's that's part one. And then there's one more thing that I noticed about this. <laughs> okay. Um, well, he says he has a total of 16 left. That's definitely not a picture of 16 of them. It, it used to be 20. He's, uh, he's updated it. <laughs> <laughs> so what, if you're going to show the number yet, the number displayed is not accurate ever. Mm. I just, I, yeah, okay. I can so, see, I can see why this triggered you, Amos. There's one more thing. One more thing. Oh God. Amy, you got any guesses? I mean, I'm just saying, like, the capital letters are a nice touch. <laughs> it, it, it is in title case. <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't going to point out the, just the general disregard for grammar. No, no, the, this, is a, this is a functional uh, the discrepancy it, between the description and the picture. There's a functional discrepancy. Oh, uh, so the title he calls it um, Call oh, of Duty oh. Infinite Games mm-hmm. when it's Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Maybe that's no. What... no, no, no. That's how like about the two... fact that it says have a bunch? So it's already telling me to do something. It's telling me have a bunch of them. Uh, have a bunch of <laughs> copies. Brand new Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Brand new. Right. None of these have the cellophane wrappers on them. Well, yeah, I mean, but mm. doesn't this, they're not. Uh, but people, the, yeah, people like to fudge that, or just say it so that it sounds nice. Right. But mm-hmm. here's the kicker: on these games, if you get them at a certain time, they come with codes to unlock shit. Mm. So, brand new, but you've already opened it. Right. So, yeah, nice try, Kenny. They're expensive too, like thirty bucks. I'm looking on eBay. You can get them, like twenty three dollars. Right. This is not a new game. Or twenty fifteen. Yeah, twenty three dollars in cellophane, probably. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. There's a uh, there, there's tonight's game of uh, Facebook's least wanted. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I had really good, really good luck with Facebook for sale just a few weeks ago. I brought a uh, a shrunk. Do you guys know what a shrunk is? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let us guess. Let us guess. Oh, okay. um, oh. Guess spell it. Can you use it in a sentence? Well, can you spell uh, it? Oh, wait, 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 wait. First, first, let us try to let us give an initial guess, and then you'll. And then you'll give us a spelling, then we'll try again, and then you'll give us, uh, you'll use it in a sentence, and we'll try a third time. Okay. Okay. A- uh, Amy, you go first on the first round. I'll go first on the second round. Okay. A shrunk is obviously, well, it's kind of like a thing that, uh, it's, so like, a tw- it. it's like a tool. Mm. It's like, Sometimes there's a weird like it's like it's almost like a weird wrench. Oh, okay, okay. So she's going with a wrench. She's going with the type of wrench. Okay, um, shrunk. I'm gonna go. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with a. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with a, a a a piece of headgear that is designed. To uh, to keep the sun off of like you know when you wear a hat like the the hat gets hot right so it, like you get hot anyway even though you're wearing a hat so it's gonna be a hat that's actually like a double layer like those little tents that have a little flap above them so that that flap gets hot but your head stays cool I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a a head cooling piece of headwear oh okay. Um... That, that sounds that so sexy. A, okay, first of all, did either did either of us get it correct? First of all, let's let's go just go with that. Uh, neither of you got anywhere even in the vicinity. Okay. Okay. Of correct. I mean, I mean, fair enough. We're just going off a word here, man. We're just going off a word. So uh, yeah. So right. I'm. Uh, so next, you're going to give us a spelling. Right, so Joe Bond in the chat is actually the closest uh, out of the three of you. He says it's a German bratwurst. Uh, well, no, it's not a bratwurst, uh, but it is a German item. Um. Uh, so I, I just went ahead and put a, a picture in the chat of of what this is. It's a a shrunk is a German piece of furniture that's basically like a giant cabinet. That's like huge. It's, it's humongous. And I had a super freaking awesome one. It actually is very close to the one in the picture that I just sent out. Um, gorgeous, w- amazing piece of furniture. And I got here in New Mexico, and my house is too small for it. So I had it in pieces out in my garage. And it was taking up just a a ridiculous amount of space of my garage that made, like, probably a quarter, maybe a fifth of my garage just completely unusable. And I finally put it up on Facebook uh, just, I don't know, maybe a month ago I put it up. I put it as free. And I got no bites. Hmm. And I was super disappointed. And because, I mean, I put it for free because I was like, you know what? At this point, it's it's costing me in space. I'm not going to I'm not going to use this thing for anything. So it's, it's more valuable to me out of the garage than in the garage. Right. Right. So I put it free and I got no bites. So then I put it up for fifty dollars or best offer like a week later. Mm hmm. I had like 15 bites immediately. <laughs> and I started, basically started a bidding war on Facebook. I ended up getting $125 out of it. Nice. What? That That's crazy. Away. Yeah. And the lady that bought it from me, she was like, you know what? I would have I would have paid like four, maybe even $500 for this thing. Like, Jeez. well, now you. <laughs> so is that, is that like a case of perceived worth or something? That's how it seems. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, I think so because I mean, when you put something on on Facebook for free, you know, or or any like for sale site for free, like people are like, oh, well, that's obviously garbage. Yep, yep. So yeah, I I mean, I guess it makes sense. I don't know, but but yeah, that, that uh, Facebook Marketplace and uh, all the for sale pages or whatever, they're actually it's a good place to find shit. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, the problem with with buying things used though is sometimes they're Sometimes they have a an odor to them. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, no doubt. No doubt. Like maybe a cat peed all over them. Yeah. Yes. Um, that, is that an issue uh, with anyone? Does anyone know about cat pee? 
Oh, Mimi, I know so much about Cappy now. She said, Mimi, I know about the cat wee wee. Yes. <laughs> and you sounded um, very uh, 1980s cartoon French guy. <laughs> it's just a wondrous thing. It's Aimé Le just, Pew. It's what, when you smell it, you won't forget it. No, and no, it's not it, something. Like you recognize it from that point on in your entire life. Yeah, especially when it's a, a male cat. Hmm. That's pretty, I'm kind of a connoisseur at this point. <laughs> How many wait, cats wait, wait, I'm, I, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when like a cat, you know, a feline shows up in your front door, and you're like, "Oh, poor thing." You know, you got to do something. So uh, you know, you take them in. And you just, you can't litter box, contrary to popular belief, you can't just train them litter box like in a week. Mm. So you kind of let them have to just, just let them pee all over your sofa and bed and mm. other bed, you know. Mm. No. Um, no. No. This is. No. He, would, uh, he would probably kill a cat. I, there, there's a reason I don't like cats. And this is. <laughs> This is just one part of that reason. I mean, I, I, well, I take that back. I love felines. I think they're they're amazing animals. I just, I I'd rather like watch YouTube videos of them rather than actually interact with one. Well, cats are they're not domesticatable. That they're, is true. I mean, they're, they're not the same. They're, yeah. Yeah, they're tameable. They're not domesticatable. Like even. Sure. Even like their diet, like it's it's interesting. I didn't even realize this until I got a cat. Like even their diets, like a, a dog could, in theory, go on a vegan diet. Maybe this is a little controversial, but it's like very, it's much easier because they're mm. actually omnivores. Mm -hmm. Cats, yeah. it's way like you really yeah. need to be careful. Cats, carnivores, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so one one of the things that uh, I learned on stuff you should know there's you know you have wild animals you have tamed animals you have domesticated animals and then you have feral animals and mm -hmm. I, I hear a lot of people saying the feral is the same as wild it's not um, no 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 so wild animals is now animal is natural is natural habitat and then you tame it and to where it can it can coexist with humans um, and then you have two different stages it can go from there it can either go feral Meaning it returns to the wild, but it's it's known domestic, you know, uh, not domesticate, but it's known it's known life with humans. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then you have domesticated, which means that they are reliant on humans. Now, the the what you think of as is dogs, they are reliant on humans. Dogs do would not exist without human interference. They have to rummage through our trash, or they have to be fed by us. They do not return to the wild. Whereas a cat will return to the wild, go feral, and still exist. A dog, in its current form, the way we understand dogs, will not. Wolves, coyotes, and all the other canines, they're, they're fine. They're still wild. But we've domesticated the dog, and it, will, it cannot return to a feral state. It has to re still rely on we, We've humans. literally bred that out of them. Yes, exactly. Literally, mm -hmm. literally bred that out. But cats, we have, we have not managed to domesticate. It's so right. interesting. Have you ever seen videos of like, I watch a lot of animal video videos, I guess, but like when you start the domestication process with, with a dog, um, they'll start barking. Like if you are a few generations out from like a wolf or something like that. Yeah. I don't know if it's just because they're around people and they've learned to do it or, hmm. but they actually start like barking. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, the whole the whole thing is just I, the, the, there's, a, there's literally an episode on uh, on domestication um, on stuff you should know. And if you if it interests you, go listen to that because Josh and Chuck really take it and run with it. And you, it, it's a really interesting episode, especially if you love animals, love dogs and cats and shit like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can't you can't get rid of cat pee. It it, le it stays with you. For well, life. that's the thing. Uh -oh. Before we before we move to our <laughs> last little bit here, I I want to. Uh, I want to tell people a little bit about who Amy Escobar is, uh, or I hope she fills in the blanks. Um, so Amy, the seemingly a rando here on Ritual Misery Podcast, I actually met Amy at Nerdtacular. Uh, there uh, was a... Uh, Kent, Kent, 
Yeah. That's that's nerd tech. Nerd tech. Sorry. Sorry. True. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't let's keep this. Trend. Let's keep this straight here. Trade, trade. Uh, so did not did nuggets tech. ever happen? By the way, like I never saw any evidence. Of of what? Did the nugs ever happen? Like, did anybody actually buy any? Uh, I there was talk. If if, if yeah, they did, I, I was it, too drunk. Yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've, bought, I've bought nugs several times since then, but uh, nugs, nugs. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's that's gonna remain a mystery forever. I think I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so th- there was a super secret like VIP hidden party thing that happened toward the end of nerd tech nerd Sorry. And, uh, that's where I met Amy and we started talking about podcasting and like the, the art of podcasts and what makes a good podcast. How do you make a podcast? How does, how, 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 uh, you know, all of these different things. And it, it can't, it turned it. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't know how to make a good podcast. We know that. Correct. Because you're on this one. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, so Amy was talking about how she was aspiring to be a podcaster. And I did have a chance to preview, hopefully, an upcoming podcast. Is uh, Amy, can you can you help me out here? Is there is there a future mm. for the the iteration of the show that that I was privileged enough to see? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, there. Oh man, there's there's a lot of of things that uh, I, I'm married, by the way. Just FYI, have been for four years, and so um, there's a lot of things that um, we both um, want to do, like creative things. We're both really creative, Stephen and I. And we've been tossing around this idea of just starting a podcast for a long time. And um, I think we, when we would get home, like we, we didn't know anyone here in Oregon. We're not from Oregon. We didn't really know anyone here. And we would like, the fun thing for us to do would be to go to like the grocery store. I don't know why. And we'd both go together and just like walk around and talk. And then when we drive home, we would end up like sitting in the driveway for like two hours and we'd just be talking. Mm -hmm. And, um, at that point you're kind of like, maybe this should be channeled to a podcast. (laughs) Like if you find the sun going down and your groceries getting warm, maybe there's a better (laughs) thing to do. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) That, that's not far off, as weird as it is. That's not far off from the origin of this show. <laughs> right. Ho- we, we, hopefully you have so much more success. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. I, you know, I think, uh, I think you and Steven should, should still pursue that. Like, absolutely. Um, I well, have the not... problem... Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I have not had the privilege to talk to him. Uh, but, but the I couple know, times... I sick. <laughs> Yeah, the couple times that I've talked to you and, you know, of course here on this show and then the preview of um, uh, the potential show uh, that you allowed me to see, I thought was fantastic. And if if he can carry on a conversation with you and keep up, I absolutely want to see that. So I'm, I'm looking forward. To, I believe in it and I look forward to it when it does come out. Well, I'm worried about doing something like with your significant other. Because mm-hmm. it's not as if every single one of these conversations didn't start getting a little like, like, well, <laughs> what, what about, <laughs> and so, right, it's right. like, it's like, well, uh, the, be- the beauty of recording a podcast, you can edit all that crap out. <laughs> Just don't do a lot. Don't be dumbasses like me. <laughs> <and> me. <laughs> oh, but it's so fun. Like, like. <laughs> It, like what I it, I don't know it, it I, is fun being a dumbass. I'll give you that. It's, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. The the less fucks you give, the the, the, the more, more fun, fun you have. Yeah, the more fun that you can have. Uh, yeah, potential yeah. Are high. <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys are able to disagree, and you're. It's not like anything's like. I mean, not visually. I can't tell if anything's going, you know, but oh, no. we're, we're texting each other right now. Like, fuck you, dude. Why did you just, see <laughs> <that>? no, <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, not right now. 
Yeah, no. The because post. my phone died. <laughs> uh, <laughs> post show, damn it! I'm gonna <laughs> get you what <out> for. <laughs> so, 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 what's what's this? Uh, what's the podcast gonna be called? Um. So, uh, the name that I'm very proud of. Um. um so, um, that's not a. Uh, I don't think that was. Taken. I mean, I mean, I don't. I don't know if you got the uh, the SEO to pull that off. I don't. Uh, I don't know if that's really searchable. It's very experimental. Give me shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the name maybe. is um um so well uh yeah every filler word that could possibly be in a podcast. <laughs> uh, on, on in your defense though, if you do title your your podcast um so well uh the <laughs> and and they listen to it and you guys are saying um so well like it, it was at least <laughs> truth in advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Just make it like extremely painful. That actually would be, you know, the trolling side of me would actually really like to do that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. You have a two hour <laughs> podcast, except when you go through it, you just take out all the actual context and you just leave the verbal pauses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You kind of lead on with a little bit that's like they think it's going to be a real thing, but it slowly like unravels. <laughs> Like they, they slowly realize there's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> Six and a half minutes of oh yeah, and um so uh, yeah uh, 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 about um hmm yep yeah well the actual name um is funny philosophy but you <laughs> always get like so like. Get this, guys. It's funny philosophy, but you switch the pH with the F, and it's <laughs> like one's on that. Like it's funny with a pH, and then philosophy with an F. Is, oh. is, 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 that's trademark Amy Escobar, by the way. Is, <laughs> is, it, a, is, it, is it philosophy like F O L I S I F Y? Ooh, oh, did you do that? I don't know that. I don't know that you did that. Oh, you changed both PHs with S. Hmm. Because that's something different, and I like. I think I might like that even better. Trademark <laughs> Richard. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Quit oh, messing it's... with my title. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, we've already got album art. Uh, like, where were you three weeks ago, jackass? Oh, that could oh, be the. God. You know, the tagline could be, um, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> like. <laughs> we're designing a podcast as we go. You got a topic we're yeah. gonna find. You just call over to Ritual Misery Productions, and we'll get your podcast <laughs> going with all the latest uh, little uh, little artworks and uh, misspellings. We can do it all right here, right just out of Ritual Misery Studios, right here in Wasilla, Alaska. Hey, Miss, why don't you uh, why don't you bring us into our last segment so that we can go ahead and wrap this show up? <laughs> Joe, Joe Mon says. The um cast with um and uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a podcast or a pod, yeah. Um, so take two. Uh, uh we have <laughs> <laughs> that Amy suggested, and I found the time to watch. But Amos, you you did not. Uh, we, we, we can't, we can't just have all of us watching the same Ted talk and stuff. That'd be, <laughs> what, what do you, what do you think this is a show with, with a, with an agenda and notes and stuff like who, who does that kind right. of shit? Oh. Um, Rory Vaden, or is it Vaden? I'm going to go Rory Vaden, how Vaden. to multiply your time. Apparently I need this more than, uh, more than I knew. Yeah. And this is a, a fairly long one. This is about an 18 minute talk and this is a, a TEDx actually, uh, Amy, you want to go ahead and, and uh, you know tell us the the crux of this one? Like, what 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 are we to yeah. get out of this? Yeah, so it's a time management one, and the kind of tropey thing is he starts out with everybody's completely wrong when it comes to time management. But if you keep watching, uh, he actually brings up some pretty good points, and um, uh, one of the points is that. Think about it in a sense of managing yourself versus managing time. And I like that he highlights how we do things, at least um, when it comes to time management these days, like it's really kind of an emotional thing that can 
really control your day just from your emotions. Um, another thing, I mean, I don't know how to recap it exactly, but another thing that I remember is like, he's kind of got this filter for deciding how to manage your, your specific things that you're trying to get done. And I like mm. that the first thing that comes up is like, is this really necessary? Um, just because on um, personal, my personal experience, I, I've, I've dabbled with various methods because I work from home and it's a challenge and to manage your time at home. Um, and I've tried like to do lists and stuff and it's okay. But what I find a lot of times I'm cramming like way too much stuff. And I, I realize like later when I actually can't do the stuff that really, I didn't even need to do half the stuff. So right. like but that's the, pretty freeing like for me. What's that? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you I was, off. I was saying that's pretty freeing for me. Mm, yeah. One of the things that I really loved about this, and this is something that I adopted actually a while back, is uh, what he calls a time multiplier, which is like um, uh, one of the steps of his like uh, like filter, I guess, is automation. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can automate a task. You free up like all of the time that you would have spent. Even if you spend a couple hours setting up that automation, you never have to do that thing again. Mm. So you free up all that time for the future. And that's something that, that I've, I've tried to do in my life, um, especially the example that he gave was bill pay, like automatic bill, bill pay. Um, yeah, like I don't remember the last time that I actually like, oh, hey, it's the 26th. It's time for me to pay this bill. White people uh, rich. All of that is automated. Well, I, I, I don't know that, but, uh, but yeah, like, you know, like my my, uh, you know, twenty seven dollars for my gas bill, my, you know, like everything, my mortgage, everything is is it automatically comes out of of my um, uh, bank account, and I don't have to deal with that every month. I remember, like, you know, 10, 10 15 years ago, where. Like I had to write out a check, like a bill would come in the mail, like a piece of paper would come in the mail <laughs> and I would have to like get out a checkbook and write out the check. And then I had to like file the thing and mark off on my, on my spreadsheet about how, yes, I paid this bill. I mailed it on this. Oh my God. Was that time consuming? Now it's like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. of course bills are paid. Like I don't, it's just, it's already done. Mm hmm. And, and um, that's that's one of the things that I really liked about about what he said. I think of a lot. Of, I think if everyone else did that, they would they would free up like so much of not just their time, but their the worry, like the the brain time. You don't mm -hmm. have to act doing the thing, but but the, the amount of time that you dedicate to thinking about the thing or worrying about the thing, you know, I I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to use that for other useless shit. Yeah, <laughs> that, <laughs> worry I, about paying. It's that it's that mental um, the mental fatigue the mental workload that th just the, the 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 constant draw of having to worry about things like that. Uh, yeah. The only thing about all of this that I can say that I've actually actively done is I spent a lot of time. Kent knows this. I spent a lot of time in in uh, audition and in premiere, learning how to do things. I don't have it automated, but I can go in and edit the sounds to to my level of satisfaction within. Mm -hmm three or four minutes and have it completely done and ready to go minus yep. the trimming and, and cutting because, out the, the gremlins in the middle. Time. Yeah. You, because you invested that time in learning how to do it the most efficient way mm -hmm. and setting my presets up and, and knowing the process and trying it 15 different ways to get the sound that I wanted and, and everything else. Um, that, and I, and I don't, I don't spend any time stressing over things I can't directly control. And that's something mm. that got me when I was in high school, I, I would literally stay up the entire night worried about things that I did not have direct control over. And now I drive my wife nuts because I'm not worried about it. And she's like, how can you not be worried about it? It's something's going to happen. I'm like, yeah, but it's, I, I it's going to happen or it's not. I, there's nothing yeah. I can do about it. Yeah. The, the <laughs> mental load is not there anymore. It's, yeah. it's, Emily, it's gone. Or, Amy, Amy, do you have a, do you have an example of something that you have done to like, like streamline, simplify your life? Your <sighs> um, well, one thing, I like I said, I, I've moved away from the to-do list. 
Um, except that I actually use a program called Asana. Are you familiar with that program? Um, Mm -mm. It's a web-based program. It's really elegant, accessible on mobile and, um, you know, your computer. I think it's actually got a lot of the Facebook developers behind it. Um, And it's like a collaborative sort of project management software. But instead of really like micromanaging my day, I will simply, when I remember that there's something I need to do, like if I need to, um, I don't know, change the oil or whatever, um, I will just set up, like as soon as I think of it, I will just set it up on Asana. It's just got hierarchies of to-do lists. Actually, it's to the point where we start recommending it to people. Like my the, the company that my husband works for now uses it. It's And it's free, like for... Uh, you know, people like you and I that won't have to have a bunch of users on it. So, but that's, that's one thing that has helped me so much. I mean, that and something like Evernote, you know, Mm. so instead of Googling something again, 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 and again, just Mm -hmm. kind of either like bookmark it, you know, keep it somewhere so that you, I've, I noticed that I spend way too much time like researching and re re re-researching because I'll like forget what I learned Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. trying to trying to keep like trying to build like a database one way or the other Mm. uh really helpful for me nice very cool very cool hey Amy um I I think some of our listeners probably are interested to hear more about uh your ideas with stuff like that uh maybe even you know some of your your random humor and uh uh, just the, the things that makes Amy interesting and unique, where would they go to discover things like that? Uh, well, um, currently I do have a YouTube channel um, that's really, really small and just starting. I'm not exactly sure where we want to go with it, but um, it's called House of Escobar. That's my last name. And um, so, I don't know, our plan is to kind of like, it's like, just showing our little adventures out here in the Pacific Northwest. Like, why are we even here? What are we doing out here? Thoughts, you know, um, and you can always find me on Twitter. Uh, Amy of Escobar. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little kooky, but, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, all, all yeah, those people no, are. it's, it's really interesting because you, you provide a lot of content and sometimes it seems very random, but, a lot of times I will find a, a like a linear thought that will travel across like many tweets or uh, the crossover from a tweet to a video or something like that. And it's it's really interesting to watch. So I encourage everyone to get, get out there and, and check out Amy of Escobar. Um, yeah. And, and by the way, I if you if you see my I'm really paranoid about this, but I follow all sorts of people on Twitter. I interact with like people that I despise so it's like <laughs> just know like if I'm doing something it's a it could be sarcastic it could be heartfelt it could like we don't just so yeah. if she compliments all you the place. just know no. that it might be an ironic <laughs> backstabbing I hate you actually <laughs> or, 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 you. or you're at least you. one one person above someone else uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, just, what about you man where are you at uh, I'm on Twitter at Ethan Kane. That's it. That's just the place. Just go to Twitter at Ethan Kane. Uh, I got a bunch of random people following me now. I don't know why that is, but uh, I got I got like businesses that have never produced a product that are following me. So maybe I'm just maybe they're just hoping for good luck. But I don't follow people like that back. So look uh, first. They know you're a sucker. That's what. That's what uh, no is. shit. I'm a sucker. Like <laughs> I like shiny shit. That's why I'm going to end up buying a phone next month. Uh, <laughs> how about you, Kent? Yeah, I'm, I'm on Twitter too at rm underscore del noche uh check me out there that's you can pretty much find links to anything from there uh but if you are curious on any other platform del noche is pretty much me everywhere else nice uh, and the show? the show can be found on twitter at ritual misery you can also go to ritualmisery.com or you can call and leave us a voicemail 567-698-7672 email us at podcast at ritualmisery.com or catch us live right here at diamondclub.tv on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, that might be changing soon, but we'll see how that goes when that time comes. And uh, other than that, 
man, I really, uh, really had a good time tonight. So hopefully this theme music kicks in and then uh, we can get the hell out of here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy, for being our guest. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>